Hey everybody, just Grim here, and I wanted to tell you that this is a little bit of a new idea I had. As it seems everybody's fascinated with their own mortality, I sure as hell am myself. And I know a lot of creators, so I decided I'm going to do a little bit of a interview segment in between episodes. As busy as my schedule is, hopefully you enjoyed this as much as I did making it and editing it. Now to the interview. Hi, how are you doing on this boring, rather unassuming night? I'm doing as good as can be. How are you? Oh, I'd say I'm doing just fine. So you won't mind if we make things a little dark, right? Have at it. Well, it doesn't matter. It's too late anyway. (laughs) So, Lefko, when you die, do you think that you will ascend to heaven or fall into the grim dark below? And please, explain yourself. Uh, honestly, neither, if that makes any sense at all. I think that uh, once I die, uh, it'll be interesting, to say the least, because no one knows what happens if we just close our eyes for the last time, and that's it, it's over, and there's nothing, no awareness. Uh, if there is a part of the uh, mind and spirit that goes on, which a lot of people like to believe that, but... I mean, no one truly knows, and I find that really kind of interesting. I wouldn't look forward to death in any way, but I do think it'll be very interesting to find out what happens after, you know, I kill cool. over. <laughs> I see. Very interesting. Now, let's say that you know for sure that you're going to die tomorrow. Mm-hmm. What do you think you're going to want to eat for your final meal? Very good question. Um, I would probably eat more than I usually do, to be honest. I would probably get a uh, halfway decent ribeye steak, but I would also want a uh, decent homemade slice of pizza. Weird combination, I know. Those are probably my two favorite foods, so that would probably be the way I'd go. And may I entreat my dear viewers that you also have an undying hatred for pickles. Oh, absolutely. Pickles are disgusting. If there's anything that's not in the afterlife, it's pickles because they're... Holy. Okay. Now let's say that you're making preparations for your death. Mm-hmm. What is your idea of your dream funeral? A dream funeral, that's going to be a tricky one, but I wouldn't want it to be somber in any way, shape, Colonel. or form. Oh, I can't um, wait to hear this. A lot of funerals are a time of grieving, and I understand grieving should probably be done, but at the same time, I would rather have people look back on the things I did in life and hopefully the areas where I made a difference with uh, my kids, my family... Uh, I hope people would remember me trying to help out in any way I could. Um, I hope that they would remember, like, more or less my legacy, if anything else. The the fact that, you know, you try to do the right thing whenever you can, and just live your life based on that. To try to improve not only your own life, but the life of everyone around you. Because what's the point of making other people miserable? And, uh, honestly, I hope that, uh... Whoever got the uh, information off my computer in time as far as what to do got the music that I want played because there's some banger tracks on there. (laughs) Okay, very interesting that you seem to have self-segued into the next question. What songs would you like played at your funeral? Um, I would do Passchendaele from Iron Maiden. I would also do... uh, I can't think of the name of it. I will have to pull it up for you real quick. Sorry for not being fully prepared. I have to look up the last track on this album because I know Journeyman from Iron Maiden. Those two songs I would want played. Um, Passchendaele being a uh, song version of the Battle of Passchendaele from World War I. And uh, Journeyman being mostly there for the lyrics. Uh, the tune with it going, I know what I want, I'll say what I want, and no one can take it away. Really love that lyrical line in that song, and I would definitely want that one played. That's it? Those are the only songs you're having played? You're going to make people sit in silence? 
Those are the big two, but keep in mind, Journeyman is seven minutes long, and Passchendaele is close to nine minutes long. So these aren't short tracks by any mean. Now, as far as background music, you could throw... Anyone who knows me would know what to throw on. So a lot of it would be like kind of like rock stuff. There might be some gaming music interposed in there. I would love for the uh, intro to Chrono Trigger to be done. Of course, this is all stuff that you know my family knows anyway. Yeah, you're not going to have uh, the theme from Mega Man 2? Uh, surprisingly, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, if there's anything from Mega Man 2, it would have to be... Uh, Wily Fortress 1, and that would be whenever everyone's filing out of the funeral home. <laughs> oh, as a way to clear them out? Yeah. <laughs> I see. Very interesting. Now, if you had a choice, how would you like to go out? And uh, I mean, die. That's complicated, because there's the selfish version, and then there's the way I would ideally like to go. The selfish version, I'm sure you already know, because everyone has the selfish version. Everyone would love to close their eyes, go to sleep comfortably, and just not wake back up. But there's also the side to where, you know, I would like my death to mean something in the way. Like, if I were sacrificing my life to save someone else's, be it through, let's say, a medical thing where someone needed... You know, let's say my son needed my heart, and it was a matter of he's going to die if he don't get it. Or he'll live on if I give it. I mean, the answer would be obvious to me, wouldn't it be to you? Of course. So, I mean, everyone wants their death to mean something, I think, but then you have the realistic, selfish thing, which... I'm guilty of, I know. I assume that everyone else is guilty of it, too, of just laying down, closing your eyes, and just uh, losing your awareness. I, I assume the next question is, what's the worst way that to die? Nope, not at all. Seems like you're not clairvoyant. <laughs> Absolutely not. I do have the uh, way I would fear most to die, which would be to uh, slowly lose my mental capabilities through like Alzheimer's or something, though. Yeah, that that seems like a very brutal way to go out. No doubt about it. Right. It's like you, you don't even realize you're going until you're gone already. It, that sounds horrifying to me. <laughs> All right. And for my next and final question that I have for you, okay, I want you to answer one question, and I want you to answer it truthfully. Mm -hmm. If you know that you're going to die... Who is somebody else that you would take with you? Ooh, that's difficult. Do I have the option of knowing if they're willing to go or not, or am I just taking them? It could be through <laughs> by hook or by crook. It doesn't matter. Okay, so with that being said, that is a hell of a question. But honestly, I would probably choose my uh, grandmother. And she's in her late 70s. She's still fully aware, but she's led a good, long life. And she's often talked about how, you know, she's ready. She's just waiting. And with her having that mindset, I think that she would be the safest choice. Really? There's, there's like nobody that you feel that this world would be better off without that you could take out of the world? I don't feel it would be my right to, because maybe there's they're an evil person right now, but that doesn't mean that there's no hope for, for them. And who am I to take someone out who might be a horrible person right now, but maybe 10 years from now they've changed their ways and they actually do a whole lot of good? I don't have that knowledge. Yeah, you're right, you know, uh... Maybe Hitler would have turned those showers into a daycare centers for Jewish children. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> now, with it being Hitler, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, and that's exactly why I'm saying I don't know, <laughs> and I don't plausible feel, deniability. Exactly, I don't feel it would be my right to take anyone, good or bad, without them having the opportunity to turn things around. 
Mm, I see. I see. Very, very interesting. Well, now this is the part where uh, I want you to uh, tell people where they could find you if they want to hear more from me. Absolutely. If you'd like to hear more from me, I have a podcast called Afterglow where I talk about my memories with particular video games, one game per episode. And uh, who knows, maybe the time you're hearing this, I won't be around anymore. So if you want to uh, remember me, that would be one of the easiest ways to do it. (laughs) All right. You're going to get caught in the afterglow. Uh, We all do eventually. (laughs) (laughs) You know, especially if they're uh, CRT, you know. Cathode ray tubes hit a little differently. Oh, absolutely. They're still in use in many areas, too. It's just yeah, not sh- too many that I've seen, bud. It's just a shame that the technology is uh, slowly being replaced because there are benefits to the CRT. But that's not what this podcast is about. <laughs> I suppose it's not. But just like us, the technology is fading and so was our lives. Absolutely. So, with that said, I would like to thank you for giving me some of your time. No problem. Thanks for having me on. No problem, Lethko. Until we meet again, whether that's in the afterlife or beyond, I hope you have a good one. Yep. You too. Sayonara. Superman!